Hi everybody. In this video, I'll introduce you to QGIS, a free GIS program that lets you create great looking maps and do all kinds of analysis. If you're already a subscriber to my channel, you can probably skip this one. QGIS is a free open source GIS program. It's widely used and quite capable for something that's free. You can find plenty of books, YouTube videos, and other help for using QGIS. There are even several Facebook groups you can join to get help. In this video, I'll introduce you to the QGIS software and point out its most important features. We'll create a simple map using QGIS and some free, publicly available data. There's a link in the video description to download the data. Installing QGIS QGIS is available for Windows, Mac, and Unix, and it's easy to install. Go to QGIS.org and click on the Download Now button. You can download the latest version, which is the big green button, or the long-term release. This is the small text link under the button. I recommend using the long-term release one. Sometimes the latest version is a bit buggy. Select your operating system and click on the download link. For Windows, choose the standalone installer, not the network one. This will download the installer file to your computer. It will take a while. Depending on your computer, it might ask to download other components. Say yes. Once this has finished downloading, run the installer and you're ready to go. Now we're ready to get started. Open QGIS. You should see something like this. If your screen looks like this, double click on New Empty Project. Let's go over the interface. First of all, don't worry about all of the buttons at the top. You'll probably never use most of them. QGIS can display a bunch of different panels. To see these, go to View Panels. You can also display different toolbars as needed. The interface has three main areas. First is the map canvas, the big empty area. This is where we'll build our map. You can zoom in and out using the scrolling wheel of your mouse, or buttons or keyboard shortcuts, and also move the image around with the hand tool. Next are the two panels that I consider essential. The first is the file browser. This is where you will navigate around your computer to find the files you need. The other essential panel is the Layers panel. Here you'll see the layers in your project and reorder them by clicking and dragging, just as you might be used to doing in other software. The three areas I've mentioned, the Canvas, File Browser, and the Layers palette, are the essential ones, so they're the ones I usually show, and I arrange them this way, but you can customize the interface to your liking. Adding data. Before we get started, there's an important setting to check. When you're working in QGIS or any other GIS software, the program aligns everything almost automatically. I say almost because there are a few things you need to do to make this little piece of magic happen. Go to the QGIS Preferences settings and click on the CRS tab. There are two important settings here. Under When a new project is created, check Use CRS from First Layer Added. Under CRS for Layers, check Use Project CRS. Now every layer you add will have the same projection as the first layer. This will keep all of your data properly aligned. Now we can get started. This map will use data from the Natural Earth website, a great source of free, high-quality data. Since our map will be created from GIS data, we need to get that data into QGIS first. There are several ways to do this, but one is much easier and the only way I do it. In the QGIS interface, make sure the browser and layer palettes are visible. If you haven't already done so, download the QGIS Getting Started file, there's a link in the description, and unzip it. In the browser palette, you'll see a folder with a slash. This is your computer's primary drive. Click the little triangle to open it. You'll see a file structure. Yours will look different from mine, but you will use this to navigate around your computer to find the data files you've downloaded. Here I've opened the QGIS Getting Started folder to show several folders inside. I've opened the 50 meter admin zero countries folder by clicking the little triangle. 
You can see several files here, but only one that ends in .shp. This is a shape file, one of the most common GIS data formats. We'll be working mostly with shape files. Most of the maps I create are made up entirely of them. Shape files contain vector data, borders, cities, roads, the kind of information most maps need to show. Now that we have our data ready, we can start using it to build a map. We'll start by adding the country borders file, the one called NE 50 meter admin zero countries. Click on this file in the browser window and drag it onto the map canvas, the main window. You'll see something like this. Congratulations, you just created your first GIS map. There are other ways to get data into your map, but dragging the layers onto the map canvas is quick and easy. Unless you need to do something advanced, it's the best way to do it. You can also drag them into the layers palette if you prefer. QGIS assigns a random color to the map. Don't worry about that, we'll change the color later. You'll also notice the new layer in the Layers palette. This works just like layers in other graphics software. You can turn the layer on or off by using the checkbox. If you want to delete a layer, click on it once to select it, and click on the Remove Layer Group icon, the last one on the right just above the layer list. The Borders layer is polygon data. Polygons are closed shapes. They have a stroke and a fill. Before we proceed, let's rename the layer to something easier to understand. Right-click on the layer in the Layers palette and select Rename Layer, then type the new name. I'll call it Country Borders. I'll rename the other layers too once they've been added. This isn't essential, but you can get some data layers with really weird names, so renaming them can save you time and frustration. Now we'll add some additional layers. First, add the Oceans layer the same way you added the Countries layer. Drag it onto the Map Canvas or Layers panel. We'll keep going with the other layers. Add them in this order. Rivers, Lakes, Populated Places, and Graticules. Each layer is added on top of the previous ones. You can reorder the layers by clicking and dragging them to a new position within the layer stack. You'll have to do this occasionally. Now I'll rename these layers. At this zoom level, the cities are all clustered together. I'll zoom in using the mouse's scrolling wheel so we can see them better. Note that the actual size of the marker stays the same as we zoom in or out. All GIS software works this way, which is different from other graphic software you may have used. To zoom out, I can use the mouse wheel, or to see the entire map, I'll click on the ocean layer and go to View Zoom to Layer. This is a handy shortcut. Now that our data is in place, let's change the map's appearance. First, let's make the water layers blue. Double click on the oceans layer. This opens a window called Layer Properties, which is a really important part of QGIS. This is where we control all of the aspects of this layer. Let's take a minute to explore this window. There are several tabs on the left side. The only ones we'll be using are Symbology, which controls how things look, and Labels. At the top is a menu that says Single Symbol. This means that everything on this layer will be styled the same way. Pull the menu down and you'll see some other options. I talk about those in more advanced videos, so we can skip them for now. Next is a box that says Fill and Simple Fill. I'll talk about these in a few minutes. For now, we'll use Fill, so make sure that's selected. Below that is a color bar. Click on this and a color picker will appear. You can choose from several different pickers. This is where we can select a color for the layer, in this case, oceans. There are also several color controls to the right of the picker, including an HTML notation, which is very handy, and an opacity control. You can add a color to the presets by dragging it onto one of the slots. I'll select a light blue color for the oceans, then click OK. Back in the Layer Properties window, you'll see some fill presets that you can use. Click on one of these to use it. I don't really like the presets very much, and I prefer to pick a custom color, but you might like some of the presets. 
At the bottom of the window is a section called Layer Rendering. This lets us control the opacity of the entire layer, as well as other effects. We won't be using it in this video. Click OK and we return to the map. Now I'll repeat these steps for the rivers and lakes. Let's do the rivers first. Double click on the rivers layer to open layer properties. At the top, you'll notice that it says line instead of fill. That's because rivers are line features, not solid shapes. They have a stroke but no fill. This means they have a color and a width. You can change the unit of measurement for the width. The default is millimeters. I'll leave that alone for now and change the color to the same light blue we used for the oceans. There are also some presets for lines. Click OK and our rivers are now blue. They look a little thick at this view, but when we zoom in you'll see they look better. Next is the lakes. These are polygons, meaning closed shapes like the oceans. Change the fill color of these to the same light blue. Here I'll zoom into the Great Lakes so we can see how the lakes and rivers look. That looks good. The color of the land looks pretty bad, so let's change that. Double click on the Countries layer to open layer properties. This time, click on Simple Fill. This opens some additional options. Now we can style the fill and stroke separately. I'll change the fill color to a light tan, then I'll change the stroke color to a darker brown and make the stroke thicker by changing the width to 0.6 millimeters. Click OK. Here's how that looks. Looks good. Now we'll go on to the cities. Double click on the cities layer and select Simple Marker. By default, GIS gives point data like cities a stroke and a fill. Here you can see those colors. I want the city markers to be simple black dots, so I'll change the fill color to black and set the stroke style to no pen. This removes the stroke. Our city markers aren't very useful without labels, so let's add those now. Double click on the city layer to open layer properties and click on the labels tab on the left side. Change the menu at the top from No Labels to Single Labels. A field called Value will appear. Click on the menu and you'll see a list of values. These are called Attributes. They're additional data associated with the cities. Attributes are a really important part of GIS data. They let us do all sorts of interesting and useful things with it. For example, you can use attributes to show only cities above a certain population size. See my Basic Attributes video for a full discussion of this subject. For this map, the attribute we want is called Name, so select that from the menu. Since we're working with labels, whatever attribute we select here is what will be displayed on the map. If we selected Population, that would be shown instead of the city's name. The rest of this window contains formatting settings for the labels. Leave them alone for now and click Apply. This applies the settings but leaves the window open, another handy shortcut. I'll move the window down so I can see the map. And now the cities are labeled. It looks pretty busy at this zoom level, so I'll move the window back up, click OK, and then zoom in. It looks much better when we zoom in. How big to make your labels depends on how you're going to use the map. See my exporting from QGIS video for more information about this. Finally, I'll change the graticules to a gray stroke with a dotted style. One more step. Every map is a projection of a round shape, the Earth, onto a flat one, a map. Projections are an important part of GIS, and they can get pretty complicated, but QGIS makes it easy to work with them. See my projections video for a fuller explanation of this topic. To see what the current projection is, click in the lower right corner where it says EPSG 4326. The CRS window will open. This is where we can change the projection of the map. It shows WGS 84 as the current projection. This is a commonly used one. I'd like to use a projection called Robinson, so I'll enter that in the search field. Two choices appear. 
Sphere and World. I want the World one, so I'll click on that and then click OK. Here's what that does. And our map is finished. Exporting the map. Now that our map is finished, we need to get it out of QGIS so we can use it somewhere else, in a printed format, on a website, or wherever. QGIS offers two ways to do this, directly exporting the map and using a feature called Print Layout. I go into detail about this on my exporting video, but here's a quick summary. There's one really important thing to remember when exporting a map. Whatever part of your map is visible in the map canvas is what will be exported. If you want to export the entire map, zoom out until the entire map is visible. If you want to show only a part of the map, zoom into that area. Here I've zoomed into Europe. You can use the magnifier setting to fine tune the view. The map canvas now shows everything I want to include, so I'm ready to export it. Another thing to check is your layers panel. Any layers that are turned off, unchecked, won't export, so be sure to check this. To export the map as an image, go to Project, Import, Export, Export Map to Image. The Save Map as Image window appears. Set the resolution or pixel dimensions and the file format to what you want, then click Save. This creates an image that can be used in most other software programs, including things like Microsoft Word and other writing software. The other two options for exporting maps are as a PDF or SVG. Both of these methods use the print layout function. I'll show the PDF process first. Go to Project New Print Layout. Enter a name and click OK. This brings up the print layout window. You'll see a blank canvas. The first thing to do is to add the map by clicking on the Add Map icon and drawing a box. After a few seconds, the map will appear. You can use some of the controls here to zoom in or move the map around, but it's a lot easier to do that in the main QGIS window before going to the print layout. You can also add a map scale and legend here. Just click on the buttons for those and draw a box. Once you're ready to go, look on the right side and you'll see three tabs, Layout, Item Properties, and Guides. On the Layout tab, check the box for Always Export as Vectors. Click on the Item Properties tab. Here you can control several things, including the Scale Bar if you've added one. We'll skip the Guides tab. Now we'll export the map. To export it as a PDF, go to Layout Export as PDF. Name the file and the PDF Export Options window appears. Leave the defaults alone to get a regular PDF. To get a geo-referenced PDF, check the box. The layers that are checked in the bottom box will be exported. The resulting PDF can be opened in QGIS and will be geo-referenced, meaning you can add other data to it, change the projection, or do other GIS functions. But you might have to redo some of the styling options and labels. Click Save and you're done. The third useful export option, and the one I usually use, is SVG. Use this option if you need to open the map in Adobe Illustrator, Inkscape, or other vector editing software to continue working on it or to prepare it for a printing press. Follow the same print layout steps as in the previous step, then go to Layout Export as SVG. Name the file, then the SVG Options window will appear. Check all four boxes. Select Always Export Text as Vectors if you want to be able to edit the labels later. Note, this can sometimes result in strange font behavior. If that happens, set this to Export as Paths. Click Save. You can now open this file in a vector editing program. For more about this process, see my exporting video. That covers the basics. To go to the next step, see my Working with Data Attributes and Non-Experts Guide to Map Projection videos. Check out my designer's guide to creating great maps at themapguide.net slash guide and download two free chapters. That's all for now. See you next time.